seat and give God a hand clap of praise if you're happy to be in God's house on this morning. Why don't you just bow your heads in a moment of thanks unto God as we go into worship today. The song we're going to sing is Hosanna because we believe that God needs to receive the highest praise on this morning. The question is, as you just focus on the on God, if you just focus on the goodness of God, why don't you think about what you need to praise God for? Are there any things that you need to say Hosanna for? Has he put food on your table? Has he put clothing on your back? Has he supplied your every need? Today is a time where we should focus on not on the bad things, not on the challenges, but on the goodness of God. Truth of the matter, God has been good in your life. If you're alive today, that means that God has been good. If you're breathing today, somebody ought to say hallelujah. If you've got breath in your body, somebody ought to just say God is good. So this morning, as you focus on the goodness of God, as we pray, as we lift up God this morning, there's no great worship. There's no uh, anything in this building without lifting up our voices toward the hills from whence cometh our help and knowing and believing that our help comes from the Lord. I tell you today, if you're afraid, I want you to put your trust in God. If you've got some challenges, I want you to put your trust in God. And when you put your trust in God and when you send the praises up, I believe God has blessings that will come down. I believe God has some things that he wants to do in your life today. And the question is, will you believe it today? Will you believe that he can do it? I know he'll do it, and I hope you believe it too. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, when we're afraid, we'll put our trust in you. We'll rely on you no matter what comes our way because you're the source of our strength. You are our safety. You guide us. You fight for us. And when we draw near to you, we have nothing to fear because the Bible says you'll draw near to us. And so we know today and we claim and believe, God, that you are in control. We believe, God, that you are all that we need today. So today we choose to trust in you. We lift up our voices from whence cometh our help because we know and believe that our help comes from you. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Let's lift them up today. Hosanna.
Yeah. 
worship him today. Come on, say it with the choir. That's why I worship him. That's why I praise you. That's why I praise you. Everybody ought to say it. He woke you up this morning. Lift your hands up and tell me. To me That's why I praise you. That's why I praise you. For this I give you praise. Oh, give God some praise right now. As you bow your heads, come on, choir, go right ahead. As you bow your head, just worship with the choir. Think about it. For every mountain, you brought me. Hasn't he brought you over some mountains? For every trial, you see me. Oh, he brought you through some trials. brought you through any valleys you don't need to praise him if the Lord had not has not woke you up and done any kinds of miracles in your life recently and if you can't think of any miracles God has done just think about that virus how he still has kept it away from you I, I think that's worthy of just praise by itself hey. they said that there's two more variants that are already here 80% of the people are catching it Guess what? You haven't caught it. And you're not going to catch it if you learn how to praise God and praise Him in advance for what He's going to do. Keep you from all hurt, harm, and danger. So, so you don't need to sing with the choir today. You can just come in, sit down, and walk out and say that you went to church. But I wish some people would stop just going to church 
on Sunday morning. I wish you would come here to worship him. And the Bible says that when you worship him in truth, giving God everything that you got with the thought that maybe next Sunday you won't be here. Maybe tomorrow you won't be here. Maybe tonight you will be having your promotion, if you will, up to heaven. But, but if you want God to continue blessing you, you've got to continue blessing him. And the way you bless him, you say, thank you for bringing me through that mountain. Thank you for bringing me through that valley. Thank you for bringing me through that cancer. Thank you for bringing me through that heart condition. Thank you for taking care of my children. Thank you. I had a bed to sleep in last night. Thank you. I'm still in my right mind. Thank you. I've got some family and friends yet around me. And so I want to bless you today. I, I, I want to give you more than the hour. I want to give you all of my body. I want to give you all of my strength. I want to give you all of my spirit. I want to give you all of my mind. I want to give you all of my praise because you have been good to me through every problem and every mountain and every situation and every heartache and pain every you brought me you brought me over you brought me over just give God about a 10 second praise can, can you just give God just a just a 10 second real praise can you you can jump up and down if you got some strength you can wave your hand you can just shout if you want to some folk just wave their hand other folk just shake their heads and say thank you can you really give him some praise? Don't, don't fool me now. Don't try to impress me now. Impress God and, and tell him how worthy he is of all of your praise today. And give him some praise. Amen. You can go to your seat right now. Praise God for you today. Amen. I'm going to worship God anyhow. I think that sound system needs to be readjusted when you get a chance. Amen. I'm glad to see all of you who decided that the Sabbath belongs to God and that I'm going to give my time early in the morning and the first thing in the morning. Before I do anything else, I'm going to worship him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to thank him. And I'm going to do what you do with the, your bank account. You put money in advance should something come up. Is that right? You got a little extra over there. Should the water tank go out or should the air conditioner shut down and should you need some money for gas you put a little money a little extra in the bank well you ought to do that on Sunday morning Sunday morning is about putting a little extra praise should something happen next week have I got a witness in the house amen I'm just glad to see all of you I see sister young here and brother young and I see brother as brother young back there amen brother young is only 92 years old. Brother Young, stand up there. His birthday was a couple weeks ago. Now, he can even stand. Look at him. Don't he look good? Don't let him take that mask out. He might get another wife. He looks so good. I'm sorry about that, Mrs. Young. But Miss Young, take care of Brother Young. And he's 92 years of age. Now, why did I lift him up? Because most of our men don't make it to be 70 and he's a black brother and he's made it to 92 years of age give him a shout out say happy birthday brother young say brother young just stay young and you'll be 135 pretty soon and then mrs laura who takes care of mr young 
is also young because she had another birthday also. Amen. She's only 58 years old. Or is it 50 years old? She is only 80. Is that 80 that she's young? 79, 76, 75, 81, 82. She's only 82 years of age. Give her a great big hand. Amen. 82 years old. This week was her birthday, and God has given her strength to make sure she takes care of her husband, and her husband takes care of her, and that is what marriage is all about. And you know who's the most powerful in a marriage? It is a sister. Amen. Miss Laurie, she's a powerful one. I know women are more powerful than these men. Amen. I'm hoping you'll turn that system off uh, shortly. Did you, hear the, did you hear the story about this groom? I heard about this groom during the wedding rehearsal. He said to the pastor, very softly, he said to the pastor, I'll make a deal with you. If you'll change my wedding vows and leave out all of the love, honor, and obey stuff, the groom said, I'll give you $100. He pressed the hundred dollars into the minister's hands and walked away with a smile. The next day during the ceremony, the minister said, do you promise to bow down before your wife? To take her breakfast in bed every day, he was changing the vow. To fulfill her every wish. The man gulped in astonishment. Finally, in a weak voice, he said, I do. And then he leaned forward and said to the minister, hey, I thought we had a deal. The minister handed him his money back and said, your wife made me a better offer. <laughs> Sister girl is bad, isn't she? Amen. Sister Macon will be uh, leading our uh, Amazing Women uh, event uh, coming in August. And I hope that you sign up soon because we have a very limited numbers that we can put inside of the Fine Arts Center. We want to make sure we're distancing and all of that. And on the fifth Sunday is home Homecoming son Sunday, not Home Going Sunday. Homecoming. Say Homecoming Sunday. Homecoming. That means we want everybody to bring in everybody who used to be a member of the Mount Zion Church or if this ministry have ever impacted their lives or we've prayed for anybody who is member, not member. We want them to come and be a part of this service on the fifth Sunday uh, of this month. Amen. Pastor Dan will be preaching. Is that right, Pastor Larry? He will be. Larry, I'm, I'm going to have to let him go because he's preaching too good around here. He's preaching me out of a, out of a job. Give yeah, Pastor Larry a great big hand praise. Amen. We're going to ask that you would prepare yourself for the offering so that we can continue uh, providing for this building and all of the ministries that we are doing here at the Mount Zion Church. I have to make this, I have to make this announcement, and I really hate to. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, pastor hates to make this announcement. But sadly enough, there's another Mount Zion that closed its doors. And it's Mount Zion in Warrensville. Yeah, they shut the church down, sold the church, because people were not coming to church like in the pandemic. And so church that used to sit seat and host 1,100 people on Sunday morning, a couple hundred shows up, and that's it, and that's one whole service. So they, they sold the church to the uh, Board of Education in Warrensville, and I'm not saying it because I'm thrilled. I'm saying it because I don't want y'all to rumor to nobody that Mount Zion in Oakwood Village sold their church and shut down. We ain't never shut down, and we don't ever plan to shut down. How... Am I right about it? We were up during the pandemic and the governor said this and that. And we stayed open. So I don't want to hear no rumors that Mount Zion has shut its door. Make sure you say if Mount Zion has shut its doors down and no longer is there, then you tell them that that's not in Oakwood Village because Dr. Macon, Pastor Macon, Pastor Macon, they all senior pastors and y'all are here. We're going to be here forever. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, forever. But now, y'all got to remember now, you got to bring some people inside the church so we can man, so we can continue saying we got a need for a church this size. But we will be all right. Amen. Come on, show them announcements before somebody gets mad at me. Noon 
Bible study is back every first Tuesday of the month. We will explore relevant biblical topics that will change your life. Join us for one hour as we grow through the word. We are currently creating new connect groups and ministries. Maybe you love collecting items and giving them to those in need. Or maybe you like to gather at coffee shops. Or you like activities like skating, bowling, exercising, or running. If you have a special interest and would like to connect with others, let the team know at the connect desk in the foyer. Join our summer activities. Rescheduled for August 4th, our college students are meeting up at the Kirk Franklin and Maverick City Concert at Blossom Music Center. There's also Vacation Bible School every Sunday in July for our children and youth with special games and guests like entertainer Rick Smith Jr. from The Tonight Show and Jungle Bob with his interesting zoo animals. Then there's Serve Day where we will pack outreach items to serve people at the City Mission and our Rahab Ministries. Lastly, Homecoming Sunday on July 31st, where we will have a cookout, vendors, inflatables for kids, music, and fun. Invite people to church to learn more about our ministries. Join Dr. Macon with his new ministry, Dads on Duty. When school starts up, they will be mentoring and protecting our kids in local schools. Sign up at the Connect Desk. We want to meet the needs of a growing world and our growing ministry. We're looking for people who are interested in joining our team in the ministry of video media, social media, office administration, program administration, and marketing. If you have a passion for these areas and want to do it for the Lord, call the church. Are you willing to invest in the kingdom? In our vision book, we mentioned that we want to expand our ministry globally through television. This takes a team, but it also takes a special financial investment. If you have a passion to invest in something big, we want you to join the Fab 15. We are looking for 15 people who can give a special gift towards this ministry. If you are interested in being a part of this, call 440-232-9588 or email us at webmaster at mountzionoakwood.org or leave your name at our connect desk in the foyer. Join us on Sunday, August 28th as we celebrate amazing women. Our annual luncheon for the ladies is back and better than ever. This year, our Amazing Women Luncheon and Fashion Show will be held right after our Sunday services in our Dream Center. In order to stay safe and have an amazing time, tickets will be limited and they will go fast. Get yours today at the Connect Desk or secure them online through Eventbrite. Mount Zion on the move for Christ. Amen. Let's give God some praise for all that he's doing here at Mount Zion. I'm going to ask if you would stand on your feet and turn your Bibles to the book of Malachi 3, 6 through 12. Malachi 3, 6 through 12 is giving time in God's house. How many here today are just blessed by God? Has God been good to you? Say amen. amen. If God has been good to you, then we ought to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we give today, we don't give grudgingly, but we give cheerfully, knowing and believing that God loves a cheerful giver. Let's read this text responsibly. The Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Ye have gone away from my orders and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. He say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings? Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Improve me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Fruit for the time. 
time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Let's read 12 together. And, and all, all nations, nations shall call you blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, in a moment of reflection, thinking on God, thanking God for all that he's done, but also as we give. Give with expectation. Give with expectation. And if you let go with your hand, God will release with his hand. That's what the Bible teaches us when it talks about him opening up the windows of heaven and pouring us out so many blessings. It's because when we release with our hand, God will then release with his hand today. Heavenly Father, we lift you up. We thank you, God, that when we release, you release, Father. I ask, Father, for those that are giving today that you would put an added special blessing in their life today. Help them to know that what they give will, will bless them because what they have left will go further than if they had kept everything to themselves. Thank you, God, for all that we're able to do because of faithful givers. We bless your name. We love you. We thank you. And we praise you today through our giving. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I'm going to ask all tithers, you can come right now to the tithing offering baskets. If you're online, go to the Givelify app or mzov.org. It's tithing and offering time in God's house. Father, I pray, order my steps in your word as you ask God to speak to you and to open up your mind, your heart, and your spirit. You will know that Satan will be against this kind of a prayer. He does not want you to go out empowered. He does not want you to go out strengthened. He does not want you to go out renewed. He does not want you to go out stronger in the faith and in the strength of the Lord. He wants you to go out weaker. He wants you to believe nothing will happen in this place. He wants you to believe that his spirit is not pervading, entering into this atmosphere. But when you pray, yes. God's spirit will pervade yes. your spirit and suddenly you will feel something deep down inside. Your life will be shifted and changed. Those of you who are looking at us online, we hope 
You understand merely being at home does not mean that you do not worship in your house. If there's any place that you do need to worship is in your home. If you're looking at us from your job, you need to pause for just a moment and whisper a word of prayer as you're listening to this particular sermon today. If you're across the country, I need to tell you that the same God who is in Mount Zion Church is also in your state, in your city. Even in your nation, those of you who are my Nigerian brothers who have let us know that you are looking at us, I want you to know that God is in Nigeria, yes. that God is in Africa, that God is in Ghana, that God is in the entire continent. Even in the midst of your warfare, you can worship God even online. Yes. And those attacks that you are receiving from the Muslim community will all of a sudden cease because you have joined in worship and prayer. Those of you who are over there looking at us, even in Russia and Ukraine, yes. God is in the midst of your warfare yes. and he will strengthen you in the time of weakness. Those of you who are in South America who have said, Reverend, we're looking at you from South America. We love you as well and we're going to preach to you as well. If you just hang in there and stay with us today. Eternal God, our Father, we feel your presence and your spirit in this yes. place now come in your strange and awesome way. In Jesus' name we pray. And all the people of God said, amen. Give God a great big hand praise as you go to your seat. As you turn your Bibles to the book of Acts, and I'll be short since I've already preached, I've yelled, I've sing songed, and everything else with you. So now it's time for all of us to go home. But there is a text over in the book of Acts, the 12th chapter that is vitally important and significant and will help you greatly because I hope today that you see something in that text that you did not see before. Though you have read this particular text time and time again, there is something in that text that I saw that I never saw before. And what I'm going to talk about is, is a season of worship. Yes. I did not see that in the text, Larry, but I see it now. Right. A season of worship. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the wise man said, wise man said to, everything, to everything, there is, there is a, season. a season. And today, the pastor is going to talk about a season of worship. Here's what it says in the book of Acts, the 12th chapter that has been written by the apostle, the disciple Luke, if you will, who gives to us the historical account of the church and tells us about the movement of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit descends down as Jesus had promised earlier in the gospel story that he must leave us in physical sense and in flesh but he would not leave us without a comforter but if he does not leave us then he cannot send to us the comforter and the comforter will come and give you all kinds of comforting and truths and will lead you into all kinds of truth. Yes. And so the Holy Spirit descends down upon the earth. And it is Luke who writes about the movement of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts, which are the Acts of the Church, which are also called the Acts of the Holy Spirit. And here's what Luke says in the 12th chapter, reading out of the New International Version. He says, it was, about that, it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church. Did you hear what he said? He said it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church. Say, neighbor, I hope you don't ever get arrested just because you belong to the church. He was intending to persecute them. Say, persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, to put to death with the sword. Say, neighbor, he had James, the brother of John, Peter, James, and John, James, and John. This particular James was beheaded, not the writer of the book of James. This James was beheaded by way of the sword. Verse 3 says, when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. Right. Say, neighbor, yes, when they come at when they come after, say, neighbor, when they come after, they come after. Some, of friends, some of your friends, just hold off a little longer, and you'll find they're coming after you too. Say, neighbor, neighbor. if they talk about your friends, 
Just wait a little while. They'll be talking about you also. Say, neighbor, if they take down anybody else, watch yourself. They're coming after you afterwards. The text says that when they took down, when they took down James, the brother of John, and put him to death by way of sword or beheaded him, when he saw that this pleased the non-believing Jews, say, neighbor, there's Christians and there's non-believing Christians. He proceeded to seize Peter also. Here's my verse, at least one of them. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting Peter, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers. Each, four soldiers each, Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. Okay. And here's, an, here's my text also. Say, neighbor, pastor got a lot of texts today. So Peter, say, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church, y'all got to get that, while Peter is in jail, but the church, while Peter is suffering, but the church, while Peter is being guarded, but the church, while Peter is being chained to soldiers, 16 of them, the church was, and underline this word if you can, earnestly praying to God for him. Now, I know most of you know this story. You've read it time and time again about the release of Peter, that there was this young girl by the name of, uh, this young girl who is there at the door, and ultimately, Peter is released from prison by way of an angel that an angel comes inside of the jail cell, you remember. And when he comes inside of the jail cell, he tells Peter, put your clothes on, put your shoes on, we're getting ready to go. And suddenly the jail cells are all open and he walks out and he's headed down the road. He thinks he is dreaming when he is not really dreaming, but rather it is a reality. An angel appeared unto Peter and released him while the church was in prayer and when Peter goes to the prayer meeting. Okay. A young girl comes to the door. She sees Peter there and thinks that, you remember the story, Peter is a ghost, or at least she's dreaming herself that this possibly could not be because after all, he was placed in prison by King Herod. Say King Herod. King Herod. Now sometimes when you think some people are really bad, you will discover that there are some people who are worse than the person who you thought was the worst. It is the grandson of King Herod, who was the King Herod at the time that Jesus was about two years of age. And you remember that King Herod in the Christmas story had heard that there was another Messiah or that there was another king on the scene coming uh, his way. And so it is King Herod who is authorizing all male children to and under to be slain. Kill all the babies. Kill all the boys. And that's why I lifted up Brother Young today because that's what our society is still saying to us. Kill all the boys. Kill all the males. Kill all the young boys. Kill all the boys in Akron and start with the young Brother Walker in Akron. Kill all the boys, you know. When you, when you have boys, you affect the family, you know. And uh, when you kill all the men, then you only have the women. And there's nothing wrong with having all of the women, but you need a complete family. So you got to preserve the young men. That's why I was out there uh, in press conferences saying to them that uh, there's got to be some repercussions for taking down young men with all of those bullets. Now, they said it wasn't 60. I know y'all happy about that. It was 47, but I don't think it should have been one. Amen. 
I ain't gonna preach no social, certain, so, social reform uh, message today, but I could. But Larry, I said I was gonna be short, so I will be short. And so King Herod there in the second chapter of Matthew, verses one through 23, you read about the killing by King Herod, the ordering of the killing by King Herod of all the male children, two and under. It's the same kind of thing that happened in Moses' day when Pharaoh had ordered all of the kids to be killed and somehow God preserved Moses and God preserved uh, 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 Jesus and God is going to preserve Peter also. Well, it is here that this is a worse uh, king than the earlier king, King Herod. There was King Herod's grandfather and this was King Herod's grandson. You've got to watch how you watch a movie. You would discover that if you don't uh, become a good model for your kids and your grandkids, uh, the same kinds of mistakes and missteps that you made, you would discover that they will make the same kind of mistakes also. Uh, if you cuss folk out, you would discover that their little baby will start cussing out at four or five years of age. If, if you become violent, you would discover that that little child will become violent also. If you beat up your wife, you would discover that that child will turn around and beat up his wife. Uh, you understand what I'm saying. There is a kind of revolving door when it comes down to how you raise up a child. That's why the Bible says, raise up a child in the way that he should go, that when he grows, grows old, he will not depart from it. And so Herod had raised up his son, Herod, and then there comes this grandson by the name of Herod, who is just as evil and maybe even more evil than his grandfather, grandfather, great Herod. He was messed up in the mind. And so what did he do? He decided that he was going to get rid of the church. And so what does he do? He puts many of them in jail. In particular, he puts in, he puts Peter in jail. Now, the reason why he put Peter in jail is right here in the text, and I'll be finished here in about two minutes. Y'all looking at me strange like I'm going to be here all night. Well, I could be. The text says, so the text says in verse, in verse 1, it was about the time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church intending to persecute them, and he lifts up the one James. James was the brother of John, Peter, James, and John, to put him to death with the sword. He had James beheaded and what he saw amazed him uh -huh. that there were other Jews who were pleased with him killing James they were happy that he killed James they happy that they, that he killed James and had him beheaded uh -huh. I won't go into that verse and so what does he do he sees that they're happy so he said well I killed James if they were pleased that I killed James just Think about how they're going to feel when I kill Peter. So he proceeded to seize Peter, to capture Peter also. Now this happened during the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison. I only got two points and I'll be finishing five. Handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended afterwards to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So underline the word Passover, and next week I'll have you an outline that'll help you out. Passover and unleavened bread. But in the midst of all of that, here is my one point, and I'm about ready to close, but I'll give it another shot. So Peter, say so Peter, was kept bound in prison. So Peter was held down. So Peter had a real problem because it was rumored that he would be next to be executed and beheaded. So Peter was kept in prison. There was something that was preventing him from being loose. There was something that was preventing him from doing what he needed to do. So he was kept down in prison. Let me tell you something. When you are kept down in prison, when there are things that are keeping you down and out, when there's things that are holding you back and holding you down, you have a resource that you don't often use, but you need to learn how to use this one resource. When you feel like you're down and out, there is a resource available for you. When your friends have turned 
their backs on you. I need to tell you that there's a resource you ought to pick up when you don't have the finances and it's holding you back from doing what you need and want to do. There is a valuable resource that saints have at their disposal and all they have to do is every now and then pick it up and that, that resource is called prayer. When you pray, something happens. When you pray, angels show up. When you pray, doors are open unto you. When you pray, health is restored. When you pray, you find a way out of no way. When they're holding you down, the church has to be in prayer. Somebody said, much prayer, much power. No prayer, no power. You're trying to handle the problem by yourself. But I need to tell you, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Because he's my friend, my best friend. He's a way out of no way. Rock in a weary land. The cattle upon a thousand hills belong to him. When I'm brutalized by police, the Lord will protect me. Have I got a witness in the house? When they snatch away my voting right, don't worry about it. The Lord is writing all the time. Much prayer, much power. No prayer, no power. Did you wake up this morning and say, Lord, I got to talk to you today. When you went to bed last night and you couldn't sleep, did you say, Lord, rock me to sleep right now. When you woke up this morning, did you say, thank you, Lord. I've got another day journey and I'm so glad about it. Prayer works. I wrote it in my Facebook the other day. I said, them prayers work. Don't ask me how. I don't always know. But I know if I go to the hospital, the prayer will work. Oh, they're a little sleepy today. I'll get it together. It works. Say, it works. It works. You, you know, God, stand up. Maybe you maybe you stay with me at least one more minute. I'm going to have to talk to uh, Bishop, my bishop over here. You know, I, I, got, I got a crazy thing that I do, but I discover that it works. I set my, my clocks, at least as many as I can, 20 minutes ahead of time. 20 minutes ahead of time. You go to my restroom, look at the clock, it's 20 minutes up. Look at some of my watches, it's 20 minutes up. Even on my stove, I said it 20 minutes ahead of time. Uh -huh. Of course, I've got somebody in my house that always set the clock back. <laughs> and then I have to go back and set it again. And she set it back again. But I discovered that I am never late. Right. And I am always on time. Because my clock says it's 8.15 when it's really 7. 55. It works. I am never late for anything. Just think about it. If you were to set your clock 20 minutes up, uh, 20 minutes uh, earlier, when you get up, it would say uh, 8.30 when it's 8.10. And you know, you might be able to lay there another 15 minutes and never be late. It works. Let me tell you something that works. Prayer works. You can't hurry God, oh no. You just got to wait. Give him time, no matter how long it takes. He's a God you can't hurry, but he works. He's always on time. Well, I guess I'll save the rest for the second crowd. I think I've got my one point out. Let's bow our heads. If you believe that prayer works, Tell yourself what is bothering you right now, what has been bothering you. Tell yourself, what is it that is on your mind? Is it old age? You're not sure if you're gonna be around another 10, 15 years? Is it a health condition? Is it a child? Is it family member? Is it a friend? What is bothering you last week? What are you worried about? What do you fear? What is causing you? Is it a job? Is it a person? 
Is it a situation? I want you to talk to God right now like never before. In fact, I'm going to call a closing altar call. If you have something that you're dealing with, I'm believing that God is going to intervene in whatever it is. If you want to talk to God with me about it, I want you to come up here to the altar area or around the altar and stay six feet apart. And I want you to bring it to the Lord. Here comes some right now. I want you to bring it to the altar and believe that God is going to handle it. I know them prayer works. Them prayer works. I have never asked God for nothing that somehow, he may not have gave me what I wanted, but he gave me what I always needed. After he gave me what I needed, I discovered that I was so close to God and closer to God like never before. Prayer works. The, bi the songwriter, uh, rather someone said, prayer is the key to the kingdom. And faith unlocks the door. So you've got to come to him. Give me some, give me some prayer lights back there. You've got to come to him in prayer. You've got to believe that he's able to do it exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you ask. You've got to know that whatever you're asking for right now, God far exceeds that prayer. He never gives you what you ask for. You say, well, God, I need my body healed. And guess what? You find out that your family gets healed. Your faith gets healed. Your relationships get healed. Your pockets get healed with more money. And things shift and change. And so I want you right now to believe with me, whatever you're believing for, that God is going to do what you're asking him to do. And if you ask in faith, you say, Reverend, I ain't got a lot of faith. It doesn't take a lot of faith. It takes faith that believes in a big God who can do anything and everything but fail. I believe somebody just got healed in their body right now. I just felt it. I don't know who you are. Give God some praise. Somebody just got healed in their body. I just felt it. I, I just felt it. You, you might not know it. You'll go to the doctor and you'll say, what happened? He said, I don't know, but you're healed. You got a situation. God's getting ready to heal that right now. Do you believe it? If you believe it, it's already done. God can do anything but fail. Eternal God, our Father, we're believing right now in the name of Jesus that you will do what no other power on earth can do. We ask, oh God, that you will touch and deliver right now, that you will heal bodies right now, rid cancers, stagnate them, move them. You will heal high blood pressure. That some who is in this sanctuary don't even know they have, that you will straighten out their cholesterol level. God, we know diabetes is a major issue among our people, and I'm praying right now that you will bring that sugar level down. I believe, and even in the finances, that all of a sudden people will see money that they never saw before and didn't even realize that they had yet. I'm believing that relationships will be straightened out right now. And there's so many other things right now, God, that I am agreeing with you that you can heal and will heal according to your word and your will. And I'm believing that the strength of these, your saints, will be strengthened right now. And that they'll have even a greater commitment to not only be with you, but to love you. Not only to love you, but to imitate your walk and your talk and to become little Christes, if you will, and little Jesuses, because you have become real in their heart and their lives. We believe in that. We thank you for this worship experience. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. And all the people of God said amen. Do you believe it happened? Give God a great big hand praise. Wave at your neighbor as if to say, I got mine. I got mine. And consider yourself dismissed. God bless you. Thank you, choir.